What's up, Greenhouse? Pastor Mike here. Welcome to House Church. Not sure if you know this, but it's been one of my dreams for the longest for us to launch a movement of house churches. And I'm just so thrilled that you guys are gathered in the name of Jesus. And church is not a building. It's not a place. It's God's people. So, man, what is up? So glad that you guys are gathered together. Would you take out the book of James? Stand up on your feet. James chapter 1. Stand up on your feet. We're going to jump into this. And I just want to shout out to everyone in Orlando, everyone that's in Tampa, some of you guys that are in some other places around the state. This week, Kelly, by the way, had a birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, mi hermano. God bless you. Papa, very good to see you. But if you got a Bible, go to James chapter 1. I'm going to pick it up in verse 4, and we're going to go at it. And if you are ready, say, let's do it. There it is. James chapter 1, verse 4 says this. Let patience have its perfect work or full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. He gives to all generously and without reproach. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Everybody say this with me. Say, give me wisdom. Let's talk about wisdom. I'm going to pray. Jesus, help. And we pray for wisdom. Wisdom. Give us wisdom. In your precious name, amen. Go ahead and have a seat wherever you're at. And let's talk a little bit about wisdom and faith and doubts and see what God might do. So this week, I, I went home on a day. I had had like a long day at work. And I know I work at a church, so everything should always be easy. But it was not an easy day. And I got home. It was an intense. I had a lot of intense things. And uh, my, one of my kids asked me a question. And I responded to the question. And then they asked me a follow-up question. And I just got to tell you, I blew that encounter with my child, okay? What I did was not a sin. What I did was not wicked. What I did, I did not cuss them out. I was not wicked and evil and mean or anything like that. But what I was not was wise. And that conversation went south. I want to talk about wisdom because wisdom is that thing that, that kind of answers the question, like, what do you do when the rules do not apply. Because there's not a Bible verse that tells you a command exactly on how to treat your kids. The Bible says don't exasperate them, don't provoke them, but it doesn't tell you exactly how to answer your child when they say, Dad, yes or no, can I go over to this person's house? You know, When you just give them the simple yes or no answer and, and maybe they ask them follow-up questions, you need the wisdom not just on what you say, but on how you say it. There's not a Bible verse that tells you who to marry. There's not a Bible verse that tells you what car to buy. There's not a Bible verse that tells you whether you should put Biden or Trump signs in your front yard right now. Let me give you some wisdom. Just don't. Just don't. I don't think there's a spoil of war in that. But there's, not a, there's nothing in the Bible that kind of tells you what you should, exactly how you should do some of these things. And this is why wisdom matters so much. Because 80% of your life is not, is it good or is it bad? 80% of your life are things that the rules don't apply to. And when you come to those areas of your life where the rules don't apply, that's where it matters so much to get wisdom. Last two weeks ago, we heard James was talking about when you go through trials, you know, you need to pray for patience. Well, patience is good, but when you get this patience, you're going to need to know what to do with the strength that God gives you. And meaning you're going to need to know where to go if any of you lacks wisdom. And I talk to people all the time, and I would even submit to you that most of the regrets that I hear people have relate to the lack of wisdom that they had in their life. It would be contracts they never should have signed, guys they never should have gone out with, teams they wish they would have never quit, jobs they would have held on to, jobs they never would have taken in the first place, emails that they never would have sent, words that they should not have said. And sometimes it's not that the words were sinful, it's that the words were stupid. It's almost like we're at war with stupidity right now. There, there's a lot of us that just keep on making the same stupid decisions. And that's why I love this book of James, because this book of James, it's like the New Testament book of Proverbs. And, and what, what Proverbs gave us is wisdom. And what wisdom is, it's, it's that 80% of life where the rules don't apply, where you get the principles of heaven and you figure out how to apply them in the real world. That's what James is. That's what James is about. And that's why it's so vital that we get wisdom, because if you don't get wisdom, you may be very sincere 
but you may be very stupid and you could be a sincere parent and in your stupidity you ruin your children not because you don't love them but because you're not wise you could have a very good heart for your employees at your job but if you don't if you don't get wisdom you may have the best intentions for your employees but you could ruin your business if you don't get wisdom which is why James says if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask God now, I just want to pause real fast, because two weeks ago we talked about trials, meaning you're going to go through some junk, all right? Everyone say junk, say basura. It's like a little emoji, the little poop emoji, right? Okay, we all go through this. Some people seem to act and believe that wisdom comes through experience, but we all know it's possible to be very experienced and still very stupid. We've all met that girl that has dated the same exact guy 50,000 times. So that guy that keeps on falling for the same exact um, business uh, faux pas a million times. Because wisdom does not come from experience. According to James, you're going to get wisdom when you ask God. Even right now, if you need some wisdom, why don't you just pray? Why don't we practice the prayer? God, please give me wisdom. So, so first of all, wisdom is more vital than we realize. But, but what I want you to see here is it comes by faith. In verse 6 it says, when you ask God for wisdom, let him ask in faith. Everyone say faith. In Spanish we say fe, in fe. Let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Let him ask in faith. Okay, what is faith? And, and what are doubts? And, and where do we even go with our doubts? Let's even start there, okay? Uh, years ago, when I was a college student, I remember I, I got sick. And I had just come, started coming to our church. This is the church I started coming to when I began to follow Jesus. And I'm a college student, never read the Bible before, never been a disciple, ne didn't know the Lord until then. And I got sick, and I went to church, and I was asking someone for, uh, for prayer. And, and they're, like, they're like, I'm not praying for you. They're like, you're not sick. And I'm like, no, I really am. They're like, no, you're not. You're, you're not sick. You're healed. The Bible says, by his stripes you're healed. So when you even say I'm sick, you're lying. You're lying to yourself. I'm like, so I went to the infirmary and they said you're sick. And they're like, no, they're lying. And I'm like, I don't think they're lying. They, they told me to like take these antibiotics. They're like, no, you're, you're just lying. And, and, I was, and they made it really clear. This person made it super clear. Whenever I was struggling, I never wanted to go to this person because to them there was this level of shutting me down like I knew I could not be authentic with my doubts so when I'm thinking about faith because I just want to let you know faith isn't what I thought it was all right I used to think that what faith meant was faith meant being like this guy who was always so incredibly certain of what he was talking about and I just I, I'm just about to let you know faith is not being a hundred percent certain okay don't now hang with me but I need you to catch this because if James says, if you will ask God for wisdom, he's going to give it to you. But you have to ask in faith. This is some of the best news you could ever get. But you're going to have to believe me because there's something about us that I think I always imagined faith meant you're very, very sure. And yet the people in the Bible that were very, very sure were like the Pharisees. They were very, very sure. And they were very, very wrong about a lot of things, okay? I think about Peter was very, very sure when he said, Lord, I will never deny you, and yet he still denied Jesus. I, I think about even right now when I turn on CNN or Fox News, these people all seem very, very sure of opposite positions. A lot of you even might, right now might be very sure of your political persuasions, and you say, I've just got lots of faith in this, but I want you to, I want you to understand something, that faith does not mean you're super, super sure and a jerk about it. Because somehow we got to create a culture of authenticity where we, we can, God can actually handle your questions. I, th by the way, this is very good news. To, whatever it means to ask God for, for wisdom and to ask in faith or to pray for anything in faith, that doesn't mean that you've got to be super, super sure. So in the Bible, there was a guy named John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was obviously like the prophet that preceded Jesus. And he was getting ready for Jesus. And at one point, he was about to have his head chopped off. He was imprisoned. He was at, about to have his head chopped off because he was standing up for Jesus and predicting Jesus and pointing at Jesus. But now that he's in jail, he was kind of wondering, like, man, did I get this right? And so some of his disciples were going back and forth to Jesus. And he sent some of his disciples to Jesus to ask him, hey, are you the one to come or is there someone else coming? And the reason he said that was, like, I'm 
Like, I'm in jail right now because, because of you, like because of, because of what I've done for you. Please tell me I'm getting this right. In other words, I'm, I've got faith that you're the one. I mean, obviously, I've got so much faith I'm in jail, but I'm kind of wondering right now. I've got these questions in my mind, and of course, Jesus sent word back, and he said, hey, go tell John the Baptist that the, the blind can see and the deaf can hear. In other words, the prophecies were all pointing to me. Yeah, I'm the one. What I love about John, though, is that John is like the greatest guy that ever lived, basically, next to Jesus, and he had his doubts. Even in the middle of his victory, he had his, he had his doubts, and Jesus did not rebuke him for his doubts. Jesus, he could, he could handle that, and, he's, and, he, and he helped him with those doubts. I think about Psalms that say things like, oh Lord, how long will I be under these circumstances? Or, oh my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? So, so the, Bible, the, the culture of the Bible is a culture of authenticity, and we can be honest about our doubts, but it still comes down to a culture of faith, okay? So God can, so faith is not the absence of doubts. It's, it's something else, okay? So faith isn't what I always thought it was. And right now there's sort of a, th- this feeling that, that faith means I'm utterly certain and that somehow what doubting is, is like, okay, doubting is like just the a complete opposite of that. But what I want you to see is this. Faith means when I'm reading where it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously without reproach and it will be given him. Faith means I believe Jesus is generous and he will give me wisdom. That's what faith is. And doubting, on the other hand, doubting is the, is not so much intellectual, and I need you hanging with me here. Please don't miss this. Watch, watch. Doubting isn't so much like, oh, intellectually, I'm not sure. Doubting is actually an inner uncertainty about whether or not I want to receive it. I mean, this is what you're going to see when he says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed. Um, It's a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Doubting is like this. Someone came to me recently and they said, hey, Pastor Mike, um, I want to, I want this, I want to go out with this guy. You know, what, what do you think? And I said, well, tell me about the guy. They told me the situation. I'm like, no, I, I don't think you should. I don't think you should. Like, I think the answer is no. And then they went to someone else. They asked for counsel. And they're like, no, I don't think you should. And so what they did is they kept on moving on from one person to another to another. They said that what they wanted was wisdom. But what I'm letting you know is they weren't asking for wisdom in faith. They were actually double-minded. They weren't asking for advice to get wisdom. They were asking for advice to get confirmation of what they already wanted to do. And so they just kept going until they found someone to give them the confirmation. And I believe that's what James is describing right here. James, it's, it's a curious word, this, this word where, it's, where, where it talks about like uh, when someone is doing this, let, them, let it be with no doubting. The word doubting, it's a Greek word that refers to, to waver between two opinions, to, to argue both sides of something. And what James tells us is that the problem with doubting is on one hand, your prayers won't get answered. And on the other, you become unstable in all of your ways. And it says, and this is a double-minded man. Can everyone say double-minded real fast? I know this is kind of weird, but there's this Greek word. and I'm not going to give you a ton of these, but I'll give you this one. It's di, it's di, psychos. Kind of like where we would get die like two. And then psychos is like the psyche. It's like die, double-souled or double-minded. It's like the psyche, double psyche. But the idea isn't just like being two-faced. It's more like being in two different directions. So so what's your point? Here's what I want you to catch. Faith is not being intellectually certain, and doubting is not being intellectually uncertain, because Jesus said, if you've even got a small amount of faith, it's going to be enough. Faith is not intellectual certainty. Faith is heart loyalty. I I, I want you catching this. When he says, when you come to the Lord, you're to believe in his generosity. This is why in 2 Timothy 1, Timothy would say, Paul would say to Timothy, I know whom I have believed. Or in the Old Testament, there was this place where the prophet was named Elijah, and Elijah was calling the people of God to choose between God and Baal. You might remember this. It was like 1 Kings 18. And the people of God were worshiping Baal and all this kind of stuff. And Elijah, the prophet, comes down there and, and he finally gets the place. He's about to go and execute all the false prophets. But he says this bitter word, this striking word to the Israelites when he says, Listen, 
how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, then serve him. But if Baal is God, then go serve him. That's doubting. Doubting is wavering between these two opinions, which is why one of the stories I love in Scripture is where there's this man that comes to Jesus, and, and he wants his child to be healed, and he's, and he's got some faith, and Jesus is like, you know, do you believe? And he says, I believe, but help, you remember what it was? Help my, say it out loud, help my unbelief. Isn't that what, I mean, right there in Orlando, right there in Tampa, like, how great is God that he's, like, he can handle this prayer. Lord, I believe, sort of, help my unbelief, because this is what faith means. Watch, please catch this. It's like when you've got a problem with your roommate, and you've got a problem, if you've got a struggle with your roommate, scripture says you are to go talk to who about the problem with your roommate? Your roommate. When you've got a problem about believing the things about God, Doubting is bad when your doubts go somewhere else. Doubting is good when you take your doubts and you bring them to God and you say, Lord, I believe, sort of, but help my unbelief. I believe, like, it's like a, 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 I don't know, it's like a Happy Meal belief. It's not like a big steak dinner belief. It's like small, but help my unbelief. Because check this out, faith is not intellectual, it's relational. Biblical faith isn't being sure of something like two plus two is four because I've done the science experiment. Biblical faith is I know whom I have believed. And the reality is Jesus has not promised that he's going to answer all of our questions. I, I personally have a lot of questions. God, why did you let this happen? Why did you let that happen? Why is our country in a spot like it is right now? God has not promised to answer all of our questions. What he has promised to do is to give us himself and we can bring our full selves to him, and we can trust in him, and that's what faith is. Faith is, God, I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to call out to you, and I'm going to stand on your promises, and when all hell breaks loose, I'm going to say, I know whom I believe. See, it's not a what. Faith is not about what. Like, do you know what, like, take healing. Maybe one of you is sick right now. I'm going to pray that you're going to be healed when I finish here, okay? I'm going to pray for that, but I need you to know, my prayer isn't the what nearly as much as the whom. I go to Jesus. With wisdom, I do want the what of my wisdom. God, I need wisdom. But is it even real good wisdom without God, without Jesus? I have found without Jesus, it's, it's nothing. I know whom I have believed. When, when all of life is going wrong, I know whom I have believed. When I get that bad doctor's report, I know whom I have believed. When, when the election's going crazy this week, I mean, this week, it's going to be nuts, guys. Man, we know whom we have believed, no matter who wins. In the middle of your pain, I know whom I have believed. In the middle of betrayal, I know whom I have believed. Okay, Mike, what do you want me to do with this? The next time you're struggling, I want you to pray this. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Maybe you even need to say it right now. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I'm scared to death about this election. Lord, I believe. Now, help my unbelief. Well, Mike, how can I do it? Well, well, the secret is, and I'll just end it on this. It's really verse five. If any of you does lack wisdom, ask God who gives generously. It, it's, it's really an interesting word. Literally, in the language that the Bible's written in, it says, let him ask the giving God. The giving God. The best translation we can kind of come up with in English is uh, God who gives generously, or the, the, the generous God. This is the giving God. As in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved you that he gave. This is the giving, the giving God. Faith is not about the certainty about the what. It's about the generosity of the who. Faith is less about you having the probabilities of how your doctor's report's going to turn out. And I'm going to pray for healing. What I'm telling you is, faith is about, I know whom I believe. And, and I'll end it like this. One of my sons, when he was little, and I've told some of you this before, but when he was little, I was just having him watch, like, stories of the Bible. I don't know if you've seen, like, The Chosen. I love The Chosen show, but um, this is back before there was good shows like that. And it was kind of a cheesy Jesus movie or whatever, you know? And we're watching this, and it was really just like verse by verse, like a three-hour, you know, movie of Jesus. 
and it was kind of interesting and all that, but he just sat on my lap and we sat there on the computer and I said, I'll just do this until he's done. And, and he never finished. We basically, we finished the entire book of John, I think is what it was. And I remember about two thirds, three fourths of the way through this thing, he looked at the screen, he looked back at me, he pointed to Jesus and he said, Daddy, I love that man. I said, what? He says, Daddy, I love that man. And it really captured my heart because that man is worthy of your love. How, how generous is God? God is so generous that he would give his only son and go to a cross. And he proved it. it when, when I wonder, Lord, how can I know if I trust you? Like in organizational cultures, the question is, can I trust my management? Can I trust my leaders? Let me tell you something. You can trust your leader. His name is Jesus. He loves you. He adores you. He gave himself for you. And my call to you today is this. Number one, ask for wisdom. But number two, ask in faith. And number three, when you're struggling with this, I want you to remember whom you have believed. Because the one in whom you believe, he's a generous God. He's a generous God. Now I'm going to pray and you guys can take this wherever you want to go in your house churches and your settings. But right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone that has a need, I pray they, they put their hand up in the air even right now. And I know this is like, you know, pre-recorded, but I am praying in the name of Jesus that your power is going to flow into someone's body, heart, mind, soul, family, parenting, and their situation right now in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you give them wisdom. I ask that you give them healing. I ask that you give them help. And I believe you're going to do it in Jesus' good name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. Can't wait to see some of you guys in Orlando, Tampa. I'll be coming to visit you soon. Go in peace. Go do your thing. Live green.